Now here's another saccadic abnormality called apsiclonus. This is characterized by rapid, brief, random conjugate saccades. They're chaotic. In this patient's example, it's caused by brainstem encephalitis. It can also be seen as a perineoplastic effect and can be seen due to drug toxicity. These are not voluntary saccades. Look at these random chaotic conjugate saccades. The patient has no control over these movements. Sometimes they're brought out very easily by rapid refixation movements. This is a poorly characterized disorder, but is thought to be related to dysfunction of the pause cells. Now, whether that's in the brainstem or the cerebellum has not been worked out well. Sometimes ocular flutter, which is a rapid to and fro movement of the eyes, can be superimposed on opsiclonus. It's sometimes hard to tell the difference. Here again, I think you can easily see these random conjugate, somewhat chaotic saccadic movements. And that's the characterization of opsiclonus. Again, in the differential, think infection, toxicity, tumor. What you can see here is when asking the patient to shift gaze, it seems to bring out this flurry of opsiclonic movements. In children, for example, one of the perineoplastic effects is neuroblastoma, the so-called dancing eyes, dancing feet syndrome. You can see that this patient has some cerebellar trouble as well, mainly truncal ataxia, titubation, very unsteady. And this was all the result of a presumed viral encephalitis, particularly affecting the brainstem and posterior fossa structures. And we're going to demonstrate that the lateral cerebellar hemispheric function is not really too bad. Finger to outstretch finger testing is slightly unsteady, but certainly not as impaired as midline cerebellar function. She does that fairly quickly.